YouTube. Back to y'all with another video. I'm gonna go ahead and record this one. And uh, hopefully y'all find the information, uh, uh, information and content good, content good. And um, maybe y'all can take some of this advice. I wanted to talk about the uh, MHC. The whole thing with MHC and what I went through with a truck in the truck in my first truck and the uh, experience and if y'all ever decide to go to mac to buy a truck then you know I'm, uh, i think it's a good idea and i'm gonna talk about it so as y'all know um i dropped a video when i bought my first truck i bought my first truck and i was having um issues with the truck or whatnot i was having like consistent issues like weekly issues it was all related, it was all DPF related. So, um, uh, basically what happened was I bought my truck in October, um, you know, I didn't really do the proper things uh, first buy, buying my first truck, which I should have. The meaning by doing the proper things of buying my first truck, I mean, excuse me, meaning um, doing the oil sample, doing the uh, dyno, you know, um, taking the mechanic to check it out buying the truck i didn't do any of that i uh pretty much you know i was hyped i got approved for a truck and i just ran with it <laughs> pretty much that's what happened um and yeah uh my luck was so good and uh ended up getting a truck that one was so good but uh and at the time i was doing also i was doing uh i was doing teaming i was doing actually teaming running off the spot market which won't, won't, won't good at all with the rates being so trash. So I mean, that was a that was a fail too. Uh, so I was running the hell out of that truck and the truck was not, the truck continued running. The truck never uh, stopped. It just kept rolling, kept rolling, we kept rolling. But anyway, I'm not gonna get too far and deep into the uh, details of that team. Uh, I mean, I'll say that for another video. Uh, but pretty much, I mean, you see, I took the truck, uh, uh, pretty much I got it on a Friday, I believe, all the, after all the paperwork was done, everything was signed over to me and to my company. Uh, I uh, got it on a Friday and uh, I, I ran my first load and uh, uh, I had my first breakdown on a Sunday, two days. You know, and um, I took it back to the, cause I got the truck in Knoxville, Tennessee. I think I went up to Chattanooga or something like that and I came back to Knoxville. I forgot where, but it won't that far. So, uh, and uh, when I came back to Knoxville, they got the truck. I went to Knoxville, Tennessee, Knoxville, MHC. Now, I'm gonna say this now, never go to MHC in Knoxville, Tennessee. They are the most disrespectful lying dealership or lying uh, uh, MHC ever in Knoxville, Tennessee. I repeat, Knoxville, Tennessee. Do not go to that MNC. Do not buy a truck for them. Do not to, don't put that. Don't put your truck into that shop. Leave them alone. Stay away. Anyway, so I put the truck. Uh, I put the truck in the uh, in the shop on a Sunday. It took two days. Break first breakdown. Boom. Uh, I took an L and paid for it. Okay. Uh, now, which I shouldn't have done. I'm gonna tell you why. Uh, but anyways, they charged me for six uh, six hours of work. They charged me for six hours of work. Uh, they, I had the premium 2000 uh, warranty or whatever. And the premium 2000 warranty, uh, it covered, but it didn't cover enough. I ended up paying more than what the premium 2000 even paid for. I think they only paid for like $400. And I was responsible for like $1,000 or something like that. I was like, what in the world? Come to find out, uh, they didn't even, uh, they charged me six hours of labor. Mind you, the truck, the truck is sitting, when you go into the maintenance shop in uh, Knoxville, Tennessee, you can, I can see my truck. My truck is right, the desk is right here, my truck is right here, and the driver's lounge is right here. So I can see through the window and see what they're doing. Whole time, man, it was not working on my truck. You know, we're going to be arguing back and forth, back and forth. Uh, I'm going back and forth with a used uh, general manager uh, where I, who, who was doing the contact with my truck because I got, I was dealing with the uh, Springfield MAC. So, but the truck was in Knoxville, Tennessee. So they had to have somebody to be the spokesperson for that truck, which was the, the used manager at Knoxville. And um, 
I'm going back and forth with him. I'm going with the uh, the uh, the head guy at uh, the maintenance shop saying, hey man, y'all didn't even do six hours of labor. Y'all talking about y'all dropping tanks. I seen the dude drop the tank, he took like an hour. Probably less than that, probably like 30 minutes to him drop the tank. And I'm going back and forth with these guys like, yo, y'all, how are you charging me six hours of labor? Labor, Mind you, the rate is 100, the rate was $170 an hour. Yo, I was like, yo, that's insane, yo. And you charged me six hours of labor? I'm like, y'all wasn't even under the truck for six hours. Y'all didn't work on it for six hours. Where does this six hours come from? You know, we're going back and forth, we're going back and forth. Yo, I took that L, whatever, I bit that bullet. Um, and then, mind you, the general manager, I'm with the general manager is trying to give me to buy another truck. I'm like, yo, I'm just, I'm in this shop already two days for a DPF issue. You trying to get me to buy another truck? I damn near cussed that man out. You know, I didn't, you know, it was just a bad experience. So, I was in the shop for about two days, or three, uh, about two and a half days. They finally let me loose and they, you know, finally got taken care of. I took an L. Now, now I have my next breakdown. Maybe about, I want to say about a week. I was in the shop again. Now this time, I got in the shop in Alabama. Now, they don't have an MAC in Alabama, but they have a, uh, a Kenworth, which is uh, called Truck Works. Truck Works, uh, was, it was real good. They told me what really was going on. And uh, they told me that the MAC in uh, uh, Knoxville, Tennessee, didn't take care of the issue. So they got billed, they got charged for it. So the not so the, the one in Alabama, they charged the uh with well, the warranty pre with well, the premium two thousand. If we had it, I had to call them, I had to call that and all that, you know. And I got the MAC in Knoxville to pay for the uh uh the maintenance bill for the breakdown in Alabama. Now I'm talking to another driver, uh, another owner operator who was on operator for Swift. And he was telling me, hey man, you need to call, um, you need to call uh, MAC headquarters. You know what I'm saying? He, I was telling my situation and telling me the issue. And he was like, yo, this is, that's ridiculous. So I ended up calling MAC headquarters, which is in Kansas. I think it's Kansas City or Kansas, whatever. And I talked to the president of MAC. And I told him my situation. And I told him the, the, the uh, situation was going on with me. And, um, Pretty much, and I, he asked me who was my uh, sales man. I told him it was a guy in Springfield. He's just a, he's just a regular sales guy. Now, what happened now that the you know, you know I can't really blame the sales guy because it was the uh, he didn't know nothing about the truck. It was the truck. He, I mean, he knew about the truck, but all he did was sell me the truck. You know what I'm saying? And the uh, uh, I pretty I want to blame the guy in Knoxville because he knew what was going on with that truck. And he didn't say nothing. And I think he got some type of percentage off that. Whatever, how it was done. But anyways, I got the I got the president involved, and now I got the Springfield manager involved as well. And we're going back and forth. I've been dealing with him. I've been dealing with him since October, all the way up to uh, end up. I've been dealing with him all the way up to the beginning of January, first week of New Year. First week of January, so that's three months. Three months, three months, and uh, pretty much, uh, I was telling my issues. I was having to break. I had to break down to Alabama. First, I had to break down to Knoxville. I had to break down to Alabama. Now, I have another breakdown again. Uh, in uh, I'm gonna say, it was a breakdown in uh, Beaumont, Texas. That was another breakdown. I got the MAC to pay for that. Um, and I was telling him, hey man, how many times y'all wanna go through this, man? I'm telling to tell y'all, the DPF is messed up. So much going on with the DPF, man. It's, I don't know what it is. I don't know what y'all, whatever y'all do to it, it's always something with the DPF. I don't know what was going on with that truck. That truck was really messed up. So I had to break down it, cause I'm not, cause this was a breakdown in uh, Beaumont, Texas. This was right before uh, Thanksgiving. So uh, the truck was left in Texas. I went home. Thanksgiving, uh, you know, for family, and I uh, left the truck in Texas. I got a rental, and I went back and picked up the truck. They said they fixed it. They did uh, some, they 
baked the they baked the, the fucking DPF filter or whatever the fuck they did. They baked it, you know. Um, they did all that and it was all good. And then um, I drove that day, and then uh, the light still the check engine light was coming on again. DPF system was coming on again, man. And I said, fuck it, I'm gonna keep driving. I kept driving with the check engine like the whole time. All, like I got all the way up to about Atlanta. It was raining outside, I remember. It was raining crazy outside Atlanta. I was off at 285. And then it finally, like, check engine light came on, everything. Because well, you know what it can work. Once check engine light come on, you cannot, you can't even move truck. Anymore. So, uh, check engine light, I was on the side of the road, 285. It was so busy, traffic was backed up, and I was stuck. So I called MAC again. Actually, I called it. I called the, uh, the general manager in Missouri, and I called the president again. I was like, "Yo, man, I don't know what to do anymore. Um, I'm all the, all the options. Uh, I'm gonna need a new truck, man." But well, they asked. But well, first, he asked me, "What do you want to do?" I was like, "Hey, man, I'd rather just get a new truck. Give me a new truck, man. We call it even." And he was like, "All right, let's let's work on it." So boom. Uh, I'm stuck on the side at 285. Uh, I got to get a record. He was trying to figure out because I was uh, no, it wasn't 285. My bad, my bad. I was like halfway from Atlanta, halfway uh, <laughs> I was like a little bit outside of Atlanta, so I had to be on 85 somewhere. Um, because I was near a pilot. Um, we were trying to figure out to get my my truck towed to the uh, to the uh, MAC in North Carolina or get it towed back to. MAC in uh, Atlanta. And uh, you know, I was trying to tell the president, hey man, I've been on the road for X amount of time and I'm trying to get home. I haven't really been on the road that long, but I was telling them, hey man, I'm trying to get home, man. Um, so basically what happened was they were trying to figure out to get it towed to the uh, North Carolina and MAC or get back towed to Atlanta. Uh, so we end up getting the tow back to Atlanta. Uh, so they got a tow back to Atlanta. Now we had a position where, hey man, I'm not making no money. Uh, I got a truck note coming on. I haven't been driving that truck. What are we gonna do? Um, he was like, we're gonna take care of the truck note. Don't worry about the truck note coming up. Coming, uh, coming up. He said that. Uh, he said that uh, we're gonna take care of the truck note. And I was like, okay, can be explored option of me. Uh, he says it's gonna take a while for me getting a truck because they never experienced this. That's what they said. So. I was like, okay, well, can I get a rental? Can I get a truck rental or something? Can y'all can can give me a rental? Um, first, I was talking about a rental, like a regular car, to get home, and I'm thinking they was gonna fix the situation, and then they called me like, hey, what truck do you want? But they was thinking of, uh, uh, I didn't think about it. I, they was thinking of a truck rental. I was like, okay, I was thinking about it. I was like, okay, well, can we get a truck rental? A sleeper? He's like, yeah, 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 let's do that. We can do that. Get your truck runners, you continue making money, you know, uh, whatever. Uh, now we was stuck at a position where they couldn't find a sleeper truck. I don't know what was going on at the time in December or the end of November, beginning of December, but we could not, they could not find a sleeper truck nowhere. So, as some of y'all know, I was in a day cab. I was in a day cab for the whole month of December and like a couple days in the afternoon. I was, in, I was in a day cab. MEC gave me a day cab. And that was my only option. You was either get a day cab or sit at home and make no money. So I took a day cab and I was running, I was running the uh I was running the day cab off the spot market. Which was it was okay, it wasn't bad, but I was definitely taking taking you know taking a little bit of L, but I was I, I made enough money to pay my bills, put it like that. Uh so I was in a day cab for a whole month and I actually actually it was actually good for me. Because I understood, I understood a lot of the uh, the spot market rate in my state. Because I live outside of Richmond area in Virginia, and I, it, it, it helped me learn the spot market in Virginia as far as running local. And I think it was very beneficial for me you know, if if I ever wanted to do some local runs or something like that. Okay, so we uh, so um, mind you, they told me that it was going to take it was only going to take about two weeks. Uh, Maybe less than two weeks to, to find a new truck. Well, that, well, <laughs> that was a lie. Clearly, it took longer than that. It took almost a month and some change. And uh, so, uh, it took a whole month uh, to do 
through that process. Uh, so, so I'm in the uh, I'm in a rental truck. Now I'm in a rental truck. Now I'm looking at I'm looking at I'm trying to speed up the process. I'm looking at other trucks at MAC website. MAC. Uh, uh, I tried to find a truck that I wanted. I was looking at options of different uh, brands of truck. I wasn't just looking at Kenworths. I was looking at uh, Freight Liners. I was looking at some Pete's. I was trying to find a truck around the same price as that truck. But um, yeah, I was finding a couple of trucks. And then uh, Springfield, Springfield uh, found a truck. He found this blue truck. And I looked at the blue truck and I was trying to figure out, I was trying to get the maintenance records. I got the maintenance, rec maintenance records and um, he showed me the maintenance records. And, uh, and I was asking where the truck came from. And I was just doing all the things that I didn't do uh, with the other truck. Uh, asked to do an oil sample, they did an oil sample, came back good. Uh, asked to do the dyno, it came back good. And I got this, they, they, the blue truck, and I got the blue truck. Came with the APU, which is the one I'm in right now. I'm driving. Came with the APU. Came with the uh, inverter. Came with the fridge. It was fully loaded. Um, got 500k on it, and I got it. Engine hours. Engine hours only had 10,000 engine hours. It's pretty good. And um, yeah, it was a pretty good truck. And, um, and it was a nice color. It's like a. Uh, it's blue. It's called Marina Blue. Marina Blue, I think it's Marina Blue, something like that. It's a good truck, man. Um, great on fuel miles. I get about like eight and a quarter on the, uh, average. A little over eight. I'm putting like a little over eight on average on fuel miles. Great in gas, man. I save a lot of money on fuel. Um, so I got the new truck uh, a couple days after New Year's. Finally got all the paperwork done transfer over because mind you they had to uh they had to buy back they had to buy back my old truck from the from the lean holder they bought back the old truck was like uh 50k or some 50 little 50 thousand they had to buy back the old truck um and they purchased and mac bought me another truck they bought me the blue they bought me the blue truck so they bought they bought back the old truck and they bought me the new truck so they yeah they took a l but they spent over 120k uh, to get me this, get me to this position I'm in now. Yeah, because I and they had to do that because I, 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 they had to do that because they didn't want to get lawyers involved. You know, we get lawyers involved, and you know, I'm gonna come out because I'm gonna fight that. And you know, I was gonna come out even bigger if we went through that process. Um, because they told me that I felt like they basically sold me a limit truck. It was a limit truck. They tried to get me, but. If I didn't stay on them, now the whole situation out of this, I stayed on them every single maintenance breakdown that I had. And it took me, it took that last breakdown, like, hey man, because I was not making no kind of money at all. You know, with me being in the shop weekly, uh, I was just taking L after L after L. Uh, now I stayed on MEC's ass every single breakdown. Even when I didn't have a breakdown, I was still, when I was just driving, I was on them about this truck. And I stayed on them. And I want, and it, what, what I'm trying to get at is, man, when y'all buy these trucks and you're having consistent breakdowns with it from the, uh, the dealer where you bought it from, stay on them. If you stay on them, it's going to, it'll be, it'll come out better. Because then now you can, now you can be like, hey, man, you sold me a lemon truck. Can y'all give me another truck? You know, and especially when it, if they if they if they're a big company like MAC, they want to keep their reputation. They don't want these reviews. They don't want to go through lawyers. They want to just go ahead and settle it, and they will do it. You just got to stay on them. Don't let them. Don't let them. Especially if you get a truck. Say if you get a truck and the engine blow out, man, stay on them, man. Like that don't make no sense. Yeah, stuff happens, but hey, I rather stay on them. And possibly get another truck, then not stay on them, just take a L, and then now you back company driving or leasing the truck. You know, and I learned a lot from this experience. Um, as a review, as far as a whole, with MAC, yeah, the process took a long time, but at the end of the day, I got my truck. I got me a truck, I didn't have to pay for it, I didn't pay for no maintenance, no 
I didn't pay for no maintenance issues. Um, yeah, my truck went up uh, a couple hundred bucks because I got a newer truck, I got a 2015 Kenworth. The other one was 2014 Kenworth. Yeah, I went. it went up a little bit, yeah. But this truck came with, uh, in person 2015, and it came with the APU, it came with the inverter, it came with the freeze, fully loaded. And it, as a, like I said, as a review as we MEC, would I deal with them again? Um, I might deal with them because now the process, with, with this being my first truck, yeah, the process was a little bit uh, difficult. But me getting a second truck, I think the process was a little, a little bit going a little bit smoother. And now that they know me personally, I don't think they will sell me another living truck because they already know what time it is. So, and I got the president's cell phone number. I got his direct line. I got his, not his direct line, but I got his personal cell phone number. I got the president's personal cell phone number and I got Springfield, Missouri's uh, general manager, used general manager, trucks, uh, uh, his personal cell phone number. So if I ever want to get another truck, I call them up and like, hey, it's your man's, it's your man's Cooley Calvin looking for another truck. But they, they going to be on it. They gonna make sure that they gonna sell me a living truck. And yeah, I probably would deal with MAC again, but I also I will also expand my options a little bit. Uh, as far as looking for another truck, if I do decide to get another truck, I will also uh, you know look around a little bit more and actually do the proper steps when buying your first truck. You know, that's really and that's my really review with MAC. I'm not saying they're a bad company, a dealership. They took care of me. Yes, the process took long, but at the end of the day, I got what I wanted. I wanted. So, if I had to rate MAC from a one to ten, eh, I give them like a, I give them like a seven. Just you know, just because you know, whatever, whatever. But that's just my opinion. Now, if you want to go buy a truck somewhere else, that's cool too. But make sure you check that truck out. They will sell you a limit truck. They will try to get you. And that's, and that's it, man. I appreciate all my new subscribers. I know y'all been looking for and looking to hear from me. And if you ever need help buying a truck, man, hit me up, man. I'll drop my uh, email below. Just hit my email up, man. And I hope the best for y'all. When y'all y'all new guys out here trying to buy a truck, man, just don't rush, man. Please don't rush, man. That's what I did. I learned from that. Don't rush, man. Just take your time buying a truck. Make sure the, make sure the truck is right. Make sure the price is right. You know, I'll holler at y'all later, man.